The Survival Series for Kids. What to do when your mom or dad says, be careful. What to do when your mom or dad says, be careful by Joy Wilt Berry. When your parents tell you to be careful, do you wonder, what do they mean? Frog says, what is he supposed to do? If this sounds familiar to you, you're going to love this book. The boy says, why? Frog says, yeah, why? Because this book is going to tell you exactly how to be careful. Safety at home. Be careful with electricity. You can prevent electrical shocks if you take certain precautions. Do not drape an electric cord across a heater, bathtub, or sink. Do not stretch an electric cord across an area where people must walk. Do not turn an electrical switch on or off or plug a cord into the socket with wet hands or while standing on a wet floor. Dad trips over the cord and the boy thinks, hmm, this probably wasn't a good place to drag this cord. Frog thinks, I don't think this is a safe place for frogs. Do not plug more than two appliances into a double wall socket. If an appliance blows a fuse when you turn it on or plug it in, unplug it immediately. Do not probe appliances with a metal knife, fork, or other instrument while they are plugged in. Always unplug appliances before cleaning or adjusting them and after you have finished using them. Pull plugs from the sockets by the plug only, not by the cord. The boy thinks, hmm, maybe this isn't a good idea, as he has six plugs plugged in and he hears, zap, pop, sparkle. Frog says, no kidding. Be careful with gas. You can prevent explosion and or the inhalation of toxic fumes if you... Turn a gas appliance off if a flame does not appear in three to five seconds after turning it on. And notify an adult immediately if you smell gas fumes. The boy is turning on the stove and the fumes are coming out and he says, Well, it's been about 30 minutes. Maybe this stupid thing is broken. And Frog looks all drunk from all the gases. The boy says, hey, mom, the gas on the stove won't light. Kaboom! The boy says, never mind. Be careful with fire. You can prevent fires if you do not play with matches or lighters and notify an adult immediately if you see something that could possibly start a fire. Fires are often caused by unattended lighted cigarettes, defective heating equipment, too many plugs in one socket, frayed or taped wires, combustible materials left or stored too close to an open flame, careless storage of cleaning products or fuel, petroleum products. There was a fire in the trash can. Fire, fire, fire! The boy thinks, uh-oh. Frog thinks, what's red, clangs, has a ladder, and you better call right now. Be careful with heat. You can prevent burns if you do not touch anything when it is hot, such as a stove or heater. And... Use mittens or pot holders when you handle anything that is hot. The boy is opening the heater and is wearing a mitten so he won't get burned. And Frog is covered up by the other mitten and says, Now you're cooking. When cooking, always turn pot handles toward the center of the stove. This will prevent anyone from accidentally knocking the pot off the stove. Frog says, hey, watch out. Frog also says, whew.
a French chef, he's not. Be careful with water. You can prevent burns if you adjust the water temperature before stepping into a tub or shower and check the temperature before you immerse your hands in hot water, such as water running from a tap or dishwater. You can prevent falls if you use a rubber mat when bathing or showering or place decorative non-skid decals on the floor of the bathtub or shower. Pick up soap bars and soap pieces from the tub and floor. Rinse out the tub after use to remove slippery soap film and wipe up a wet floor. Frog sees the hot bath water and says, Looks hot enough to cook a lobster in. Lobster's walking by and says, I'm not getting in there. Be careful with medications. You can be sure that you do not take too much or the wrong kind of medication if you do not take medicine of any kind without adult supervision. It is best if you do not take medicines which have been prescribed for someone else. Do not take medicines in the dark and check the label before taking any medicine. The boy is holding this medicine and thinks, I'll just take a couple of these. They should help my headache. The pillbox says, Pollywog pills. Frog thinks, Yeah, if you were a frog. Be careful with clutter. You can prevent accidents if you remove toys and equipment from floors, stairs, walkways and driveways. Keep walkways and steps free of ice and wet leaves and remove all broken glass and rubbish in and around the house. Be careful with steps, stairs, and ladders. You can prevent falls if you use only well-lighted steps and stairs and use a sturdy support like a step stool or ladder when reaching up to high places. As the boy's walking down the stairs with the clutter, he starts to trip and fall. Oops! Frog says, watch that first step. It's a Lulu. Be careful with dangerous things. Do not use any of the following items without adult supervision. Aerosol and spray cans, chemicals, knives and other sharp kitchen utensils, razors, dangerous recreational equipment, electric appliances, tools, matches or cigarette lighters, explosives or fireworks, or guns. Also, do not play in or around a vehicle such as a car or truck. The boy is standing in the middle of a mess of explosive and dangerous things and Frog says, I'm getting off this page before he blows us up. Safety at school. Be careful on the way to and from school. When you leave for school, go directly to school. When you leave for home, go directly home. Do not stop along the way. Do not use a different than usual route, unless your family or the school knows of your plans. The boy and the frog fell into a hole and think, uh-oh, how is anyone going to find me? This isn't my usual route. It gets. Frog thinks, I should have stayed home. Be careful at school. To ensure your safety and the safety of others, your school has established rules. These are rules for indoor areas, such as the classroom and the cafeteria outdoor areas, such as the playground and parking lot, outings and special events and emergency procedures. It is important for you to know what these rules are and to cooperate with them completely. Safety in the community. Be careful when you are a pedestrian. 
Wear light-colored or reflective clothing when you walk in the dark so that drivers can see you. Watch for vehicles in driveways, alleys, and parking lots. Before you walk behind a vehicle, be sure it is not moving. Always be alert and be prepared to stop. Never rely on anyone else to see you. As the boy is reading a book, he crosses the street and doesn't see the car, and the car smacks and swerves into a pole to avoid hitting the boy. And Frog says, he's about as alert as a doorknob. Do not accept a ride from a stranger. Choose the safest route when planning your walk. A safe route is one with sidewalks, traffic signals, and marked crosswalks. If there is no sidewalk, walk facing the traffic. As the boy is walking home, he sees all kinds of dangerous things. Dangerous cars and men at work, dangerous intersections, caution signs. And Frog says, Maybe we should just use an alternate route. Look both ways before crossing a street. When you are certain that no vehicle is coming, walk. Don't run across the street. Cross the street at an intersection where drivers expect to see pedestrians. Use crosswalks whenever possible. On a street with several lanes, cross one lane at a time. Make sure that the traffic in each lane stops for you before you proceed. As the boy's carelessly walking across the street, he looks up and he hears, Screech! Bang! Smash! Crash! And Frog says, I think next time you'd better use the crosswalk. A pedestrian signal changes from walk to don't walk. When the signal says walk, you may cross the street if there are no vehicles coming. If there is a traffic signal instead of a pedestrian signal, cross the street when the light turns green. Be sure that there are no vehicles coming before you proceed. At intersections without signals, wait for the vehicles to stop before you cross the street. Do not try to make vehicles stop for you by stepping into the street in front of them. Make sure drivers see you. Do not walk in front of a vehicle until you see the driver looking at you. The boy steps out into the street and thinks, uh-oh, as the lady has to slam on the brakes, screech, to avoid missing the boy. Be careful when you are riding a bike. You can prevent accidents if you learn how to ride your bicycle with skill and coordination and Practice riding in safe places, such as your own yard, your driveway, a playground when it is not crowded, a street that is closed to traffic. Keep your bicycle in good condition. Make sure that your bicycle is equipped with a light and an appropriate number of reflectors. If you plan to ride in the dark, the boy brings out his bike, sproing, flink, Frog says, looks like you could use a tune-up. Do not ride your bike in heavy rain or snow or when the roads are icy. Wear light-colored or reflective clothing when riding in the dark. The boy is riding a bike and realizes he doesn't have any brakes and says, whoa, and thinks, oh no, no brakes. Frog says, this kid is about as bright as a 20-watt light bulb. Do not hitch rides on moving vehicles. Do not carry passengers on your bike. Put all parcels, books, or packages in the basket or rack. As the boy spills all of his papers, Frog says, I would suggest next time to use a rack instead of your head. Keep your eyes directed to the road and be ready for emergencies. Always ride on the right side of the street. Always give pedestrians and motor vehicles the right of way. Oh no, the boy runs into the lady with her groceries. <sighs> Obey all traffic signs and signals. Always use proper hand signals to let others know what you intend to do. Left turn 
put your left hand out, left hand signal. For your right turn, put your left hand out, but hold it up, bent at the elbow. Or if you're on a bike, use your right arm for a right signal. And to stop, put your left hand down diagonally. When crossing streets, proceed as you would if you were a pedestrian. Look both ways. Cross at intersections and use crosswalks. Walk your bike across busy streets and intersections. Never ride out into the street from between parked cars or from alleys or driveways without stopping to look for oncoming vehicles. Never weave in and out of traffic. Never pass a bike or other vehicle on a hill, curve, or intersection. Ride in single file when riding in a group. The boy tries to ride out into the street without looking. Vroom! Frog says, what a hopping good day. Be careful when you are a passenger. You can prevent accidents if you... Do not distract the driver of a car or bus by talking too loudly or being too active. Do not put your head or arms out of the window of a moving vehicle. And always wear your seatbelt when riding a car. As mom's trying to drive the car, the boy is talking, blab, 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 talk, 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 tap, 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 tapping on everything, distracting mom. Be careful around dangerous places. Be careful in and around dangerous areas. It is best to have an adult accompany and supervise you when you are in these places. Animal trails, caves, driveways and parking lots, high places, places where large machines are stored, unexplored, uninhabited areas, streets and highways, bodies of water. Safety while on vacation. Be careful when you are swimming. You can avoid a swimming or diving accident if you learn to swim well as soon as possible. If you are a non-swimmer, do not rely on a safety device alone to keep you afloat in deep water. Make sure that an adult who swims or a lifeguard is around you whenever you swim. Know how deep the water is before you dive into it. Be careful when swimming in lakes, rivers, or oceans. Current, uneven depths, surf, and submerged rocks require special swimming skills and extra caution. Always have another person with you whenever you go swimming. Be careful when you are camping and hiking. Learn the rules and regulations that have been established for the area in which you are camping or hiking. Then cooperate with the rules completely. Do not explore the area without a guide. Do not wander off by yourself. Learn to identify and avoid poisonous plants, dangerous insects, and other dangerous animals. As the boy's in the forest, he hears bzz, bzz, tss, and sees a po dangerous poison ivy sign, and Frog says, on second thought, maybe this isn't a good spot. The end of your mom and dad having to say, be careful. Frog says, phew. The end. Dear parents, be careful. Have you ever made this urgent request and had your children respond with yawns and glances that said, how come you're so uptight? It happens all too often. It's obvious that you know something your children don't know. You, through experience, have learned that the world isn't always as snug and safe as the world your children have experienced during the years of their lives. You know that there are dangers in the world to beware of. But how do you tell your children about these things? Up to now, you've probably done everything you could to protect them, and you've bent over backwards to keep your children safe. 
and as free as possible from pain. How can you possibly tell them about accidents, natural disasters, and other trauma without scaring them to death or thrusting them into the realm of recurrent nightmares? No one wants to scare children unduly, but if they are going to deal with real life, they need to know about life. The bad news is that there are things in the world that can hurt us. The good news is that most likely we can handle them. The trick is to learn how. The handling of difficult situations begins with a respect for them. This respect may involve a healthy amount of fear. Fear at its best causes persons to be careful in situations that demand caution. Thus, your children should be encouraged to listen and respond to their fears. Oftentimes, children have already accumulated their own particular healthy fears. Other times, parents have to help children acquire them. Of course, many children's unnecessary fears result from their innocence. All too often, children fear things they do not know about. They fill in the empty blanks with irrational answers, and these answers lead to illogical behavior. When this happens, children need to be educated so that any unnecessary fear can be dissipated. The only fears that need to be preserved and respected are well-founded fears. You will need to exercise great care in helping your children sort through their fears. Once children are respectful of difficult situations, they must learn the specifics of dealing with them. Here's where this book comes in. It can be most helpful in explaining exactly what needs to be done in difficult situations. More importantly, it will tell children why something must be done. If you will use this book systematically as part of a continuing program, or as a resource to be used whenever the need for it arises, you and your children will experience some very positive results. With your help, your children will know what to do whenever someone says, be careful, and will act accordingly. Sincerely, Joy Berry. Thank you.